Akshara Foundation's video on calculating money and time. To help you teach your students about handling money, Akshara Foundation's Maths Kit has play money notes and coins. To teach students about time, the kit has a clock. Show students play money of different denominations in the kit. There are currency notes with denominations of 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500 and 1000 rupees. The kit also has 10 paise coins and 1 paise coins. 1 rupee is 100 paise. To convert rupees to paise, multiply the rupees by 100. To buy any item, we need to know the cost of the item. For example, a book costs 16 rupees and 75 paise. Children should be familiar with the symbol for the Indian rupee. We write it as rupees 16.75. A point separates the rupees and paise. If some article were to cost less than a rupee, say 50 paise, we write it as rupees 0 0.50. Show students the fun fact that there are multiple ways of paying the exact amount using currency of different denominations. Ask students to pick up currency notes to make rupees 126. Four friends, Tony, Saida, Ravi and Mamta decide to put together the money they have saved and buy crackers. Tony has rupees 56, Saida has rupees 44, Ravi has rupees 58 and Mamta has rupees 42. They first sort the notes and then count and find out that the sum is rupees 200. Tony exchanges all the notes with his mother and gets two notes of rupees 100 each. In other words, multiple notes of different denominations can be exchanged with fewer notes of larger denominations and the value remains the same. Let students calculate the total cost of a drawing book for 16 rupees and 75 paise and a colour pencil box for 12 rupees 50 paise. 75 paise and 50 paise add up to 125 paise. 125 paise is 100 plus 25 or 1 rupee and 25 paise in coins. So, 16 rupees plus 12 rupees plus 1 rupee is 29 rupees. The total cost thus is 29 rupees and 25 paise. Students must write the sum on paper in two columns. The column on the right is marked paise and the column on the left is for rupees. Remind students that the process of addition starts from the column on the extreme right and carries over to the next higher place on the left. Give them more such problems for practice. If a student gives a 50 rupee note to the shopkeeper for a drawing book and colour pencils which together cost 29 rupees and 25 paise, how much change will the shopkeeper return? To check whether she has got the correct change, she must subtract 29 rupees and 25 paise from 50 rupees. Writing this in a square ruled book is helpful for children in the initial stages. Since 25 paise has to be subtracted, 1 rupee has to be borrowed and converted into 100 paise. And 100 minus 25 is 75 paise. If 29 is subtracted from 49, we are left with 20 rupees. So 20 rupees and 75 paise is the correct change that she should get. Now, 
what is the cost of seven pens if the cost of one pen is five rupees twenty-five paise? We multiply the cost of one pen by the number of pens we are buying to arrive at the total cost. Similarly, if six bus tickets cost one thirty-two rupees, what will be the cost of one ticket? To arrive at the rate per ticket, we divide the total cost by the number of tickets. The cost of each ticket here is twenty-two rupees. Another essential skill that students need to learn is how to tell time. You will find the clock in the math kit very useful to teach this. Draw the attention of students to the two hands where the longer hand is the minute hand and the shorter hand is the hour hand. Together, they tell the time in hours and minutes. The clock is marked with numbers from one to twelve. Which denote the hours. The clock is divided into sixty smaller parts, which are called the minutes. The minute hand moves only in one direction, from twelve to one, to two, to three, all the way round till it reaches back to twelve. With one complete round, the minute has covered sixty minutes. At the same time, the hour hand has moved one hour. Or one step in the same direction. Sixty minutes make an hour. When the hour hand is at one and the minute hand is at twelve, it is one o'clock. When the hour hand is at two and the minute hand is at twelve, it is two o'clock. If both hands are on twelve, it is twelve o'clock. When the minute hand has moved from twelve to one, it has crossed five small lines of five minutes. A quick way to calculate the minutes is to multiply the number that the hand is pointing to by five. For instance, when the minute hand is on three, it tells us that the time is fifteen minutes past the hour, since three multiplied by five is equal to fifteen. When Ravi wakes up in the morning, the hour hand is on seven and the minute hand is on twelve. It is seven o'clock. When he has finished his breakfast, the minute hand has moved to six. Since five multiplied by six is equal to thirty, it is thirty minutes after seven and written as seven thirty with a colon separating the hours and the minutes. Or we say half past seven, since the hand has moved halfway round the circle. Ask students to show similarly where the two hands of the clock will be when it is one thirty, four thirty, twelve thirty. When Raju leaves for school, the hour hand is at nine and the minute hand is at three. The time is fifteen minutes after nine o'clock, and is written as nine fifteen. The minute hand has moved one fourth or a quarter of the circle. Hence, this is also called as quarter past nine. Ask students to show quarter past seven, quarter past nine on the clock, and then write the time in their notebooks. When Raju reaches home in the evening, the hour hand is between three and four, and the minute hand is at nine. We say. It is three forty-five since nine multiplied by five is forty-five minutes. It is also fifteen minutes before four o'clock, so we can say it is quarter to four. Ask students to show seven forty-five, one forty-five, and nine forty-five on the clock. A day starts at midnight. The twelve hours from midnight. To twelve noon are called anti-meridian, represented as A.M. For example, the time when Raju wakes up in the morning is written as seven A.M. He goes to school at nine fifteen A.M., whereas the time from twelve noon to twelve midnight is called post-meridian and written as P.M. Thus, 
the time when Raju returns from school, it is 3.45 p.m. And when he goes to sleep, is 9.30 p.m. Let students become confident with telling time as a.m. and p.m. before introducing the 24-hour clock. Since a day has 24 hours, the clock in the math kit shows from 1 to 12 hours on the outer circle. The inner circle shows 13 to 24 hours. The 24-hour clock is a way of telling time in which the day starts from midnight and ends at midnight. It is divided into 24 hours, numbered from 0 to 24, not as a.m. and p.m. The day begins at 00.00 hours and ends at 24.00 hours. 7 p.m. is written as 1900 hours since it is 7 hours after 12 noon. Numbers less than 10 have a zero in front of the number. For example, 97 a.m. is written as 0907 hours. Railway timetables are written in the 24-hour clock. For example, the train to Delhi departs at 16.45 hours. But Saida is not familiar with the 24-hour clock. How will she know exactly at what time it departs on the 12-hour clock? If the time is beyond 12, she must subtract 12 from 16.45, which is equal to 4.45 or 4.45 in the evening. If a train departs at 8.10 hours, then all we have to do is drop the first zero and read it as 8.10 a.m. For practice, give students more examples where they have to convert the 24-hour clock to a.m. and p.m. time. Let students mark the time on the clock and understand this important concept. For more practice, give students time in a.m. and p.m. and ask them to convert it to the 24-hour clock timing. Once students are comfortable with telling time, they will find this very useful in daily life. They will also confidently be able to tackle problems in the textbook.